Hello everyone. Whenever anyone is hurt, they have two choices. Either be wounded or be wise. Whatever it hurts, whenever it hurts, observe. Life is trying to teach you something. A wise person is not someone who keeps on justifying his actions for no use even after a setback. A wise person is someone who holds, who observes, who introspects and then fights back. Today, through this particular video, we are going to share, we are going to discuss something very, very serious issue, right? But before that, let me remind you, our grand CMA results sale is live, is going on and the prices have been heavily slashed, heavily reduced just to help you and ease you in your preparation. All my CMA law courses, CMA interlaw, CMA final law in English, in Hindi, they are all available at uh, reduced prices. There is no extra coupon code which is required. You can check out the app. The offer is not going to last so uh, last for long. It's going to end soon. Check out our app, book my video, or you can visit the website bookmyvideo.in. Okay. Now, as you can see, a beautiful image is there in my background, which states that life has two rules: never quit and always remember rule number one. You don't have to quit at any 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 uh, you can say in whatever situation may come you don't have to quit that's what you have to remember you don't have to quit mentally you don't have to quit physically you don't have to quit emotionally you have to fight back you have to stay strong now what is our concern ma'am why are you making this particular video because i'm heavily disappointed i am so 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 disappointed seeing the results of a lot of students. I am not uh, here to boast about, okay, my students have got so much huge marks or anything like that. No, this is for those genuine set of students uh, who have uh, faced a great setback. But before I say something, let me show you something. These are not the mark sheets of some rank holders or anyone like that. These are the mark sheets of, I have, although I don't want to disclose the name over here. So I have um, cropped these uh, mark sheets, but they are genuine ones. Okay. Now look at the very first mark sheet. If it is visible to you, paper number 13, that is CMA final law paper. The marks are 33 in all other subjects. The person is passed and had. He or she scored seven more marks. Had he or she scored seven more marks, a qualified CMA, he or she would have been. Are you understanding the importance? Look at the next mark sheet. In all the papers, the person is passed CMA inter law, 37 marks, paper number six. In all other papers, the person is passed. Just three marks and a CMA finalist. Do you think what is common in all these mark sheets? Less marks in law, be it paper 6 or be it uh, paper 13. Everyone is scoring very high marks in all the subjects, but uh, this is the subject which has actually shattered the dreams of many students. See, for those students who could uh, somehow get passing marks in law, that is in paper number 6 or in uh, paper number 13 also, they are actually very happy and very thankful uh, that at least uh, they have passed. But uh, because... Uh, it is, uh, although I'm uh, taking the video in complete English language, but here I want to say something in Hindi. There is a famous type log that pass to pass ho ve hai, bhale hi petalis ho ya pichatta, right? So it doesn't matter whether you score 40, exact 40, or you score 75, as long as you're passed. So anyone who has scored just 40, or 41, 42, just the passing marks is also happy, at least they have passed. But think about those students who have 
failed because of this subject they are highly frustrated now at this point of time many students have this feeling and they are occupied with such negative thoughts about the institute that there is slashing of marks in law subject there is slashing of marks in this law subject the marks have been reduced or maybe the paper was tough or maybe the marking was extremely tough even if the paper was okay the marking was very strict they have purposely they have intentionally reduced marks in law my dear all these negative thoughts are going to take you nowhere i don't want to uh, console you by agreeing that any of the above mentioned reasons is correct I, I really don't want to do that. I'm not here uh, to do that. I'm here to tell you about the truth which is in your own hands. Something which is uh, uh, you, you cannot control the outside forces, but you can certainly be con uh, you can certainly be in control of your own actions. You can certainly see what. Uh, you can certainly control what you think, what you do and what positive vibes or negative energy you want to attract to yourself. Just blaming anyone else will not help you. Anyone else will not help you. This is a time when you need to understand and realize that what went wrong. Any short marks in specifically law paper it happened because you have not taken you the subject in the manner you should have there is something which was lacking for sure maybe you prepared for uh, 50 marks you were expecting somewhere 45 marks so maybe you thought at least i will pass and some two three marks fell short i can understand that i can understand that but my question to you is, how can you blame or how can you even think that if I'm going to prepare for 45-50 marks, I should score 40 marks? It is a professional exam. I completely understand that the passing percentage this attempt is, I think, uh, uh, the best so far. 51%. Can you even imagine the passing percentage and when you have such high passing percentage and you could not clear because of some 2-3 marks, it is uh, the worst feeling ever. I think nothing can be more disheartening than to see your result with such passing percentage when all of your friends are uh, uh, putting some status or sharing some good news and you are disappointed. Of course, I understand that thought process. Of course, I understand that feeling too. But you need to understand something that no one is to be blamed other than your own preparation. Why, ma'am? Because let us have a look at some more mark sheets. Let us have a look at some more mark sheets. A very average student. See, I'm again uh, clearly specifying, I'm not sharing here the mark sheets of any rank holders or anyone who are brilliant students. So they are brilliant, they have been brilliant and they are going to go a long way. But I am discussing about the students who can do it, but because of their uh, so you can say their focus was more towards other subjects than law because considering it a theory paper is often neglected. We need to uh, practice, we need to do all these numericals because we gain interest also while solving those problems and we consider them important also. Even if you're not gaining interest in a theory subject, you have to understand that if, if you do not divide your time to all the subjects, the subject like law can actually shatter your dream. Okay, so it's very important. A very uh, average student has has managed to get such great marks in all the papers see the consistency is beautiful of 
course, 81 is exceptional. 69 marks, paper 6, 69 marks. Paper 7, 60, paper 8, 70. Managed to complete group 1. The person appeared for group 1 only, of course. Okay, so managed to complete group 1. How? By focusing on this paper also. I am not asking you to leave focus on all the subjects and just focus on law. No. But you need to understand that this is a subject uh, which requires a lot of efforts. A lot means a lot of efforts actually. See, above 65 is uh, certainly a very decent score in law. But how? How students manage uh, this uh, beautifully, this wonderfully? What is the difference between these type of students who have and these type of students? What is the difference between the two set of students? What is something extra that they did? So I have spoken to both set of students based on their experience and based on my experience. Here are a few points which you must understand, take note of and execute to not let law become a problem ever again. Okay, now before we start this, let me share with you few conversation also that you actually get that feeling and understand the same. I have here three screenshots. I think you are uh, able to see the same. Okay, see, the student got 68 marks in law. Okay. Now, when asked about what is that extra thing that you um, did to score well in law when other students are actually struggling even to gain that passing marks, apart from all the good things that he has told about me, I, what I want to point out that I am going to do that. See, chapter wise MCQs doesn't matter um, which teacher you are following, which book you are following, what you have to do is practice. The step of practicing questions is the key in law because in all the practical subjects you have a lot of numericals to practice. Imagine going and attempting a practical subject without solving any numerical. You have studied everything, you know how to do everything, but you haven't ever picked up a piece of paper and pen and solved the numerical and straight away you land up to the examination hall and there you are asked some 7-8 uh, full-fledged questions which you have to solve. Will you be able to? The answer is no. Then why don't you understand the same in case of law? Right. So, so... Of course, whatever video you subscribe to, watch it at least two, three times, etc., etc. Okay, the person revised three times and practiced in writing. This is the simplest I did. Only two tips this particular student has given us. Again, he has also got an exemption. I think uh, somewhere around uh, 72 or something like that. What he did is important, revised three times and practiced in writing. There is one more person who has given a proper feedback. It is very important to understand law very well. So you get the importance of conceptual understanding. Revise two to three times till the time your concepts are clear so that you are able to solve case laws and write answers well. Good command on remembering sections. That means sections are also to be remembered. Now, specifically for CMA interlaw, uh, solving case studies of Sale of Goods Act, Contract Act, Ethics, very scoring. That is the tip which has been given. Anyways, we are going to discuss about the tips and tricks a little later. I will try to come up with subject specific strategy for you. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Very soon you may find a video on the same or CMA Inter as well as CMA Final students. But as of now, what is something that you need to do?
there are broadly five steps the most ignored step is this practice revise when you go for revision you probably just open the book flip the pages okay this i have revised this i have revised and you revise it like this do you even understand what revision means revision is not reading revision is assessing yourself whether you remember the provisions or not do you get it the first step is to understand then uh, you need to of course uh, learn you need to revise you need to practice and then finally you need to present your answers how do you gain understanding many students have even messaged and asked uh, ma'am do you think uh, we should subscribe to some classes as we have very less time well i cannot straight away say that yes you must go for the classes no i am not here to think about uh, some mean motives of making money or anything like that i am here to actually guide you and for guiding you it is very important to know you since i cannot walk and know you i want you to know yourself okay first of all you must go open read a chapter and decide about your comprehension skills some people have excellent comprehending and reading and um, english uh, they have a very good command over english they have very good comprehension skills plus if you have time because to comprehend the provision yourself you also need time i through my entire professional journey i became a chartered accountant when i was the age of 21 and i have never taken any coaching in my life be it any practical subject be it any theory subject be it fr or anything like that i have never taken any coaching right but i took time okay when i was in finals i took time to comprehend and understand all the concepts and after deciding that okay i think i can do it all by myself so i made proper notes of every subject because once you can devote time in comprehension every time you cannot right so if you think that you are good at comprehension then go for self study there is absolutely no harm but prepare notes because why when you are devoting time to understand a provision you have devoted supposedly 1 hour 1.5 hour in actually analyzing the whole provision you must write the crux of it because once again you will not be able to devote so much time so you your short notes should be prepared after your first comprehension of the whole subject but if you think you are average if you think you are not so good or if you think you do not have time maybe you can do it but you want to save your time then find a suitable online or offline coaching and go for it watch demo compare prices check what is suited to you check the language check uh, whether you are able to connect with the teacher or not check whether uh, the manner he or she is teaching you are able to understand or not and then decide and subscribe okay that's completely your choice that's completely uh, uh, how you are going to uh, uh, go for um, the classes the exceptional guidance at available is available at affordable prices even we are aiming to provide you quality education at affordable prices through a current sale that is going on right so uh, everywhere there is knowledge it's you who has to gain it the second step is to learn the second step is to learn because of course it is a theory subject and you must understand that learning is important if you are not very good at mugging up things you have to find ways to do so because it is important sometimes students come up and ask them what do we learn the book is of 600 pages do we learn the 600 pages no my dear you don't have to learn 600 pages but supposedly one whole page is of one section then you must highlight the keywords 
you must know the headings if it is a, a, a topic of say corporate governance or anything like that which is completely theoretical you are talking about codes or anything like that then you must remember those headings how it evolved or anything like that when there is a provision you must remember and learn the limits important section numbers in my class, I keep on telling students that this section is important, this is important from examination point of view and like things. So when you note the same, highlight the same, okay, and uh, make sure whatever important topics, whatever important section numbers are being told to you in the class or you identify the same in your journey of learning, you must not ignore them. That should be learned immediately. Apart from that, the keywords limits headings they all should be learned how do you learn it well simple tricks which actually work when i am saying something i am reading the same book maybe i have read it thrice one page i have read it thrice i don't know in what frame of mind am i reading it that whenever I try to close the book and my eyes and I try to repeat it, I am unable to. Now, if I am reading the same page loudly or I am walking and reading or I have written it once, the highlighted keywords, the provisions, I have written it once, then surely it's going to be in my mind. I'll share a very simple trick with you while the going to my office when i was a student uh, during my training tenure while going to the office and while coming back from the office it took me total i think 40 or 45 minutes now what i used to do is whatever i have studied a previous day okay i used to recall the same I have studied a provision, a very simple provision. Maybe you have just read about uh, some disqualification of directors. So that is what you remember. You need to recall all those points on what grounds a director is disqualified, right? So you have studied it uh, just a day before. Today you will remember at least some part of it. Recall it. Recall it once, twice, thrice. You have a lot of time in these uh, spare time I would say when you're doing daily course maybe when you're brushing your teeth or when you're taking bath or when you're just having your breakfast now you might think ma'am these are the times when we want to relax no my dear you don't have time to relax you don't have time for any uh, social media any um, uh, any relative any friend no one they all will come when the time is good okay this is the time only dedicated for your studies and you must drop everything else and study of course i would always recommend you to go for meditation or yoga or anything like that for half an hour during the whole day which is also important so physically also you must be fit but apart from that every time you must be studying and you must be only thinking about studies don't take any mental pressure but you have to plan it that way only and these theory things have to be learned in this manner only Step 3 comes revision. Again, students ask me when to revise ma'am. The first revision should be done immediately. Immediately after maybe you have comprehended the provision after you have taken classes. When a provision is being taught to you in the class, the first revision should be done immediately just after the classes or maybe on the same day. If it is not possible, maybe the very next day, but that's it. Don't delay it beyond that. Okay. The second revision, when a part of your classes have been completed, maybe 50%, 60% that have been completed, or maybe if it is divided into uh, the different sections, like we have after completing a particular section, say if you're reading about industrial laws, so after you have completed industrial laws, right, that you can do it. The third revision is the most important revision. Wherein you don't have to see and read. You have to just see, cover it and recall. Then check what I don't remember and what I remember. If you think I do not remember anything, then read the whole thing and then do this again. 
this is an exercise which must be done revision once again i'm repeating it's not reading the book it is assessing yourself what you remember and you must note what you don't remember so that you can give special focus to that particular provision to that limit to that important topic immediately uh, a day before exam so third revision is not reading it is assessing mark my words after completing your whole syllabus every topic every section just see okay this is the section cover it with your hand close the book do whatever you want to recall all important points okay i have i remember all the points this is one point which i'm missing again and again so just let me note this somewhere or let me highlight it over here that is a day before exam i will make sure that i this goes to my head right because we have a very short term memory so we have to constantly brush up our memory right and last revision is certainly going to be a day before exams wherein you are going to recall the keywords limit section number of every provision now fourth step is practice after uh, now when when do you have to practice questions and what you have to practice that is also important see practice as much as you can in every subject as um, consider it like maths you will gain advantage you will gain edge as many questions as you can practice okay so from wherever you get a question be it a question of some other professional course be it a question anywhere you get a question practice it practice it and practice means by writing the same by writing the same it will increase your speed it will increase your presentation skills okay but there is something that you must practice past five year question papers must practice the mtp released by the institute the study material questions they all must be practiced and after every revision you must practice supposedly there is a topic that you have studied in the class today and there are two questions of the same that you have found so write those two questions immediately on your first revision so after first revision on those topics attempt questions okay after your second revision pick some random topics uh, random questions of the completed topics after third revision mtp question papers etc everything should be done and uh, after fourth revision that is the day before exams you don't have to write answers you just have to review the questions that you marked during practice as important ones okay now the last part is presentation the last part is presentation although this uh, video is not about how to write answers how to present answers if there is any specific requirement although i have um, uploaded a lot of videos about the same but still if there is any specific requirement you can drop in the comment and i'll see what can be done from my end however in short i can uh, make you recall that you have to learn answer writing well in advance to avoid chaos in examining students don't practice so they don't learn how to write when all of a sudden in examination they're being asked a uh, different different types of questions they get confused okay i have this answer in my mind but i don't know what am i writing how do i write okay this uh, um, maybe if it is a direct question should i write in paragraph if if it is a question of 6 marks then at least i should cover one page one and a half page well that those Three hours of your examination tenure. It is not a very good time or a very correct period for you to decide that how long should I write or which should I, uh, how should I write, etc. Right? These things should be prepared well in advance. Marks have no relation to the length of your answer. Let me specify this very clearly in professional exams. if it is a descriptive type of question uh, which is hardly asked like a very long essay type of question in that maybe you can decide that if it is just of two marks and i know so much of course i'm not going to put in everything in the answer 
So in that situation, I can reduce the answer and I can maybe just cover the headings. I will not elaborate it or anything like that. Right. But otherwise, otherwise, if it is a case study, if it is a four marks or if it is a two marks, of course, you have to uh, conclude. You have to uh, give a proper conclusion. So marks have to be kept in mind. But just because the question is of six marks and you have only this much content doesn't mean that you have to elaborate it by putting articles A and the for in any story. Okay. If it is an objective answer, then of course there is no presentation which is needed. And uh, I think uh, if it is subjective, in direct questions, avoid long paragraphs, write more in points and don't quote incorrect section numbers. If it is a case study based question, once again I am repeating, I have said it a number of times, divide into four parts, first of all the provision involved, second para given facts, third para analysis and fourth para conclusion, right? So this is something probably you know. I don't think uh, in this entire video I have uh, told you anything very new, maybe a few small points or maybe I have brushed up the things which you already knew. But it is very important to execute the same. Often we don't find, we don't look for mistakes within ourselves, rather we look for mistakes what is going around. This happened, ma'am, that happened because of home-based examination. There were so many students who were indulged in malpractices. That's why they have scored high. They have... See, let me tell you very clearly. If any student has done any such thing, karma there is waiting for them. You don't worry that someone did so and they have succeeded and I was honest and I have failed. Don't ever think so. You don't know this is not the end of life. This is not uh, what is going to define you throughout. Okay, fine, this person became CMA and this person could not. No. In uh, just two, three months, you are going to appear for your examination and then you will also become. So you both will come at the same level and you don't know where life is going to take you or where life is going to take the other person. You just be honest to yourself, be honest to your institute. They are doing the best possible things for you. Okay, and uh, just work hard. Try to find your own faults first and try to rectify them in the best possible manner. Please focus on these five main things in any law paper. Once you gain ace over these five things, I am very, very, very sure that you will be able to score decent marks in examination. I am not saying that you will get 80 plus, 90 plus or anything like that. But for me, more than 65 is a decent score in law, which I believe that you will be able to get if you uh, follow what I have told you. Okay, so trust me. If uh, you do it all in an organized way for all the chapters under proper guidance, you're surely going to get good marks, right? So this is a subject which requires a lot of efforts and you must understand this. It's high time that you must understand after this alarming situation of all the students and a setback that they have faced in this paper of law. It's uh, very important for everyone to understand, for those who have faced this situation, they must have understood and for those who are going to appear for their examination in June, in December or maybe in any upcoming um, uh, session, they need to learn from the mistakes of their seniors and take this subject very seriously, take proper guidance and uh, follow all these steps. Okay. Uh, the subject, um, by the way, is like a girl in your life, like, right? The girls, prima facie, they look very simple, they look very cute, right? But uh, 
the ones who have dealt with them they know that girls are very complicated and very difficult to crack so is this paper look simple theory paper hai ho jayega i am going to just read the provisions and going to write in the uh, answer paper but when you know this you understand that it is very difficult to crack perhaps the most difficult paper to crack in your professional journey right so focus give attention and follow these five simple tricks for a law paper i hope the video was helpful all the very best thank you